ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we are live at the spring equinox. We're going to give you a forecast for all the signs given that the sun is in Aries. Now, my main thought process behind this is the sun is in Aries, and we also have Mars moving into Pisces the next day. Okay, um, let me see. Hit this. Give them a little. Give them a little insight on the spring equinox and see, is it rolling? Are we? Are we? Are we on? Because I don't see it coming up on my um. My my my. Yeah, we're. Okay, cool. I have three people. But I'm, I'm, I'm mostly curious. Can we hear anything now? All right. So we got three people watching. Thank you all for being here. Technical difficulties. Let me know if you hear in the comments if you can actually hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Is it is it actually microphone hearing or no? Man, they've been playing games. All right. We're going to just run it like this on no microphone. My microphone been doing. I've been getting hit the Mercury retrograde early. So Mercury is also in Aries. So step one that's important. We're going to do all signs. All right. So drop in your comments or our comments. Drop in the comments what sign you have Aries. So keeping Aries. All right. Or even your rising sign. So this will give you a forecast if you want to go by your rising. Um, we're going to go from Aries all the way up to Pisces. That said, we're leading into the solar, the, the new moon solar eclipse. Before that, this weekend coming, a couple more days, we have the lunar eclipse. All right, in Libra, it's a, it's a high tense season. So drop your rising sign. And that will give it. I see some people pulling in. What's up? Dynamic duo. Do you have to do something on this? Gang, gang, gang. I know, but it, it just didn't give me. It's just, it's just, it's just like it's just streaming. It didn't really give me any option. Like, is it on? Is it live on IG for you? Or mm -mm. Not? Yeah, I'm telling you, technical difficulty joint is has been next level lately. But it says you are live on IG. I don't know. And I, I see this here, but I don't see anything. Normally, it gives me a go live button. I can yeah. see you. She said she could see me, but I don't know. Are you watching us from Instagram? Um, no, because it, it's coming from the oh, YouTube Oh, it's coming chat. from YouTube. Yeah. Whatever. I'm not even going to get crazy with them today. Because I know right now we're in the Mercury retrograde shadow already. And I've been seeing it happen. So this is one of the things that you want to kind of be very patient with over the next days. And much like in Aries, move forward. All right? Um, don't spend too much time on the small details. Okay. Like, oh, my microphone's not working. So, oh, I, okay, no. I unplugged the mic. Live video ended. That's what it says? Yes. Exit it. Close the app. Try to look at it again. You know, so all these little things right now are things you want to just watch out for and not get crazy with because here's the reality, all right? When you're looking at all these retrogrades, it's the kind of thing that's testing you to do something different. It's testing you to think different, um, to shift, to move, to react, all right, and be more proactive and help you understand like, okay, where am I not being so proactive? So these are just some simple, simple themes that are kind of happening in step one. Now, Sun and Aries, let me look at these comments. We're gonna go ahead, what's up? Good to see you. I wanna let y'all know, um, Sam. Oh, that's a nice comment. Yeah, dynamic duo gang. <laughs> I wanna let y'all know tomorrow is actually day one. We're doing the masculine, feminine, um, merge integration of your masculine signs, your feminine signs, all right? That's day one, week one for the sacred innovator. So I'm going to show you all that, and then we're going to go ahead. We're going to get into Aries starting, and then we're going to move to Taurus. We're going to move to Gemini. We're going to move to Cancer. So again, let us know what's in your chart. Check this out. The last day to register. And then with that being said, we shall see you soon. <laughs>
y'all for watching. And thank y'all for hitting the thumbs up and the likes button. We're about to give it to y'all. We're about to get real jiggy. All right? We're going to get real jiggy on this live. But shout out to J-Lo with the dynamic duo comment. Let's get jiggy, 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 <laughs> jiggy. Um, so, um, again, you have the last chance. Tomorrow is my day one, week one. I'm doing it by Ooh. myself tomorrow. All right? She's not going to be there. We don't do this. All right, but then on week two, you're going to have her all alone. And it's one of the things that I love because it allows us both to be leaders and our individual right. So, again, drop your sign. Aries, Taurus, Scorpio, Gemini, Capricorn. Because, again, I work like a channel. She works like a channel. We're going to be pulling some cards for you, show them the deck that we're using today. What, what do you like about this deck? Uh, that it has, like, everyday scenarios as well as magical scenarios. So it is, like... The saying of as above, as below. Mm -hmm. So I like that a lot. As you can see, I, this is like a uh, woman with business suits, but there's also like fairies and stuff. So it, it is easier to bring in the magic into the reality and realizing that there is magic in the everyday life. So yeah, that's how I like this thing. Cool, cool, cool. So do you want to pull an overall energy for us today on the spring equinox of what we're stepping into? Sure. Oh, all right. <laughs> nothing more fitting than the first card of the ones <laughs> so it is like fiery it's a if you look at the description it literally says that today is a day to start with action uh as we step into the spring equinox the day and the night are the same length and actually from here until um the the, the winter solstice the day is gonna get larger and larger and larger and what does this mean? That the sun is actually there more time and it allows us to charge more so we have more energy and we can actually accomplish our dreams, manifest whatever it is that we want and just start putting everything that we thought about in our like the prayer season and the winter when we're like more uh, hermits. <laughs> and now it's finally <laughs> the time to go and do. Okay. So the key thing with this spring equinox that really surprised me and brought me like some joy and relief and like understanding at a deeper level is that the moon at the beginning, the moon and the sun is equal, but the sun will be growing. So do understand that in these first beginning stages, March equinox, March the equinox beginning like today, tomorrow, um, that it's still even right now. Right. So take the time to reflect. Act on what you're doing, slow it down. Act on what you're doing, slow it down. And then notice very soon, it'll be coming more act, more act, more act, more act, to the point where it's all instinct, all impulse, no need to reflect, all right? And do take this into account, right? Because depending on your sign, you might be in a fourth house transit, you might be in an eighth house transit, you might be in a 12th house transit, right? And so if you are in those transits, which are going to be the earth signs, yeah, the earth signs. So all the earth signs, you're going to be more in the dark. So do understand that. And you're naturally slow by default. So this might not be your favorite time if you're an earth sign. All right? So eight minutes, we're beginning Aries. Here we go. I think it was 8-11. Aries, we're going to pull a card for you. Obviously, you're the star of the show during the spring equinox. The sun is in your sign. The sun is in Aries. Okay? Um, you have a solar moon coming up in your sign. A new moon. Brand new season for you, those of you near 19 degrees of Aries. Now, the sun is ruling your fifth house of appreciation, of respect that you've earned, respect that's sustainable. And it's mostly sustainable when you put actions and efforts towards yourself that separate you from your actual family dynamic. And this is the key. So you have a family, they have conditionings. At this point, it's like, Boom, you're becoming more aware of what those conditions are. And it's about actually taking a risk on yourself, taking a risk to follow your impulse and realize that once you follow your impulse, joy is what's going to follow behind. All right. You're going to gain more vitality after you discover new parts of yourself, which means that you cannot continue to tie your identity to another person, whether it's to a lover, whether it's to a family member, okay, whether it's to an ideology or concept. Aries, the key thing is with this, it's all about you. The first house and the fifth house are the houses where we really identify and create who we are and not yet who we're going to be remembered as, just the part where we're experimenting. And so this is the key to remember, Aries. This isn't about legacy for you at this point in time. This is about exploration, self-discovery, and then you'll know when you're on track if you have vitality after, if you feel more joy after, if you have a deep satisfaction in your gut and your belly. 
then you're going to be on point. Understand your ruler Mars is going to be going into Pisces and it's going to put you in a 12th house. So you're going to be going through a lot of turmoil when it comes to really honoring and appreciating yourself. But that turmoil is already a karmic ending. It's not something you have to do right now. It's something more you have to accept. All right, what we got? So for you, we got the Six of Cups. And this is all about, uh, actually, like nostalgia. And I feel like it has a lot to do with what you, do, with what you just were saying yep. about, like, not yep. letting other relationships. Like, the, this is what is going to pull you away yep. from the action. So beware of this feeling of, like, mm, I wish I was here and always, like, going to the past. Like, that is going to be your indicator of what you need to let go right now. That's the 12th house transit. So we're going to move into Taurus, all right? Now, Taurus, you're actually in the 12th house transiting right now, all right? You got the time. You're in the 12th house right now, Taurus. So like I said, you might be spending more active conscious awareness on those nostalgia things, on those six of cup things, okay? On the things that made you sad, on the ways in which, if I see the fourth house, on the way in which you come to terms with your conditionings, or if not, you're starting to become consciously aware of what are these conditionings and how do they keep me in a, uh, a framework and a mindset of security? And how can I essentially, with the sun and Aries, battle these insecurities of mine? Okay, battle the parts of me that have been manipulative, okay, and have gained some manipulative habits, whether conscious or unconscious. From the family dynamic. Taurus, there's a time frame where with these two energies, one being cardinal, one being mutable, the 12th house mutable, the fourth house cardinal, you have a chance to actually dissolve some of these programs. And Aries is like, I'm here to fight. Like Aries loves the challenge. So this is a time frame where this isn't a time to fully be in, die, indulged in the sadness, in the grief, okay, in the potential pain. But again, to realize that it's about finding a, a, a way to be grateful of what you've discovered and start to see the beauty behind those same family conditionings and realize that there's something that's actually creating more power within you, more force. And this is the kind of thing where, you know, when you move forward one more season, you'll feel that power in about a month to a month and a half from now, Taurus. Yeah, and uh, for you, Taurus, I have the first card of the Pentacle suit. And this is all about starting the hard work, like laying the foundations of what you're going to use next. So I, I guess that it, it, it is on point to just start working towards the little actions, just little steps. Don't go crazy about it. Like this is not the time to just like go like full, but it is a time to lay out the, the, the things that are going to help you build later. Mm -hmm. Something that is going to be actually long standing and not something that you just built right now and it is kind of fast and it's kind of shiny and you have it but then it also can be dissolved just as easily yeah yeah that's that's the key Taurus. this is a, a preparation phase for you you prepare right now and you take your privacy seriously all right um if i'm you right now Taurus, i'm not telling my family too much okay i'm not i'm not sharing and even outside your family people in your immediate environment I'm not sharing too much. I'm just spending that time with myself. All right, I see somebody in the comments. We got some Gemini energy, Gemini ascendant. Aries in the 10th, bang, bang, hole on the 11th. Okay, so let's give you the love. Thank you for hitting a thumbs up, y'all, for watching this. I appreciate y'all for being here. Remember, tomorrow starts day one of the eight week sexual reality. Sunday, I'm giving away a free reading and one month's worth of membership. All right, any reading on my website, Angela Reiki, Vedic Astrology, any reading on my website, I'm giving away one free reading tomorrow. And it's uh, not tomorrow, on Sunday, for anybody that comes to the Eclipse event. Check it out. You'll see the raffle. You'll see the details. All right. And I'm going to be helping y'all work through fear. That's the main thing. So, Gemini. <laughs> Yelo, he, she's like, oh my God, so funny. It is exactly me. Like, yeah, that, you, you are the one in the comments. <laughs> ah, <laughs> that he was mentioning. <laughs> I choose you, Pikachu. Yeah. <laughs> so, here we go. Um, we have, uh, bah, 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 bah. okay. We have Gemini. Gemini, you're in the 11th house. Okay. Great house. Right. Great house. Aries likes the 11th house. Aries loves the 11th house. This is the natural sextile energy of, of Aries to Aquarius. And Aries loves it because Aries needs and enjoys a challenge. 
Aries is one of the most intellectual signs with Aries being ruled in the fifth house. So fifth house, 11th house, these are two axes. So Gemini, you are another energy that sextile. Okay, have a very harmonious understanding with Aries. Y'all love to play. This is the key. And so the key now with the, the sun ruling your third house, play with your hands. Literally clay. Like with the 11th house, big dreams, this would be like using Play-Doh to build a castle. Like using Play-Doh uh, or, or using, you know, go to a molding class and, and build yourself, you know, a new mug or something. Anything you do, build in your hand, it actually will indirectly help and support you through fun, joy, excitement, okay? A vigor for life, a radiance for what you're doing, when you're doing, how you're doing it. Aries, this season for you is going to be freaking marvelous running through your 11th house. You're going to start to connect with people at these events. So you go out for a wine and paint night. You're going to connect with somebody at that event, and they'll show you a different side of your own thought process that actually is about separating from the societal mind. Hear that again. Yeah, you go to, that hear, that, hear that again. You didn't hear what I said. Pick it up. Pick it back up. Okay. You go to somewhere that's fun. Paint night. You know, cheese and, and wine. You know, exposition. Go to a museum. Go to something that is uniquely different than what you would do on a regular base. That's the key. Go to think about what would my family do? What are people doing in my media environment? And do something different on purpose. Mm. So you have to discover what are they doing and how can I do something different? And when you do that, you're going to put yourself around a unique group and set of people with different skills that actually are attributing to your future. And it actually should be something that's fun. This, not, this should not be something that you feel like, oh, it's an obligation. This isn't doing a course that's directly related to your field of study. It's actually doing something completely outside of the bracket. And then out of nowhere, it'll bring you back something to your field of study, but it'll likely surprise you as for what it is. This is a time frame for you to just have pure joy, Gemini. All right? What you got for us? Well, I actually got a little bit of a warning. We Ooh. got the Eight of Swords in reverse. Ooh. And I'll show you it like uh, straight up so you can see it. But what it means is that you have to be mindful of the deceptions that can come. And it, and it makes a lot of sense with, yeah, with all of this energy of meeting new people and doing the networking and doing the connections. Just be mindful to make sure that those are truthful connections. And we have Mercury retrograde coming too. Mm, so make sure that's like, why. double check all your documents, double check every single piece of data, everything that has to do with technology. Like make sure, take your time that everything is perfect and in order because this is going to be something that could uh, make you set back and obviously with that comes a little bit of like the frustration the depression of like okay you know what I don't want to do anything anymore so in order to prevent all of this just make sure like spend extra time mm -hmm. on relationships on uh, for ourselves to being truthful about what we say what we're saying that we mean to do this connection that we mean to keep our word and uh, everything that we put on paper and everything that has to do with technology so make have the back of that hard drive, all of that. Yeah, I'm glad she said that because everything I said, what I didn't realize was Mercury was retrograde. That Mercury, your ruler, Gemini, was already in its reflection period. That's what I didn't understand. So with this new piece of information, here's the key. Collect and understand what groups, what pages, what networks you're already actually a part of and start taking an objective look and how can you cut away? And this is the other side of Aries that is about cutting away. Um, I, I can see some of it right here too. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, but that's Okay, relevant. thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Pulling away from the groups, pulling away from the page, pulling away from the people. This makes a tremendous amount of sense because Aries, remember, it's this horn and it's, you, you flip it upside down, it's about splitting. So you're splitting away from the things that are actually inauthentic from you. This is why I said, we are natural and immediate environment, the one you're actually already used to. I said, step away from them and do something fun that is not with them. And yeah. you'll connect with a different group and set of people. So that is Mercury in retrogrades, advice, warning, and heads up for you, Gemini. All right? Wow. That's so crazy how they, they, they came together. <laughs> okay. Thank you all for hitting the thumbs up. Thank you all for hitting the likes button. 
Let's move on. We got a time stamp, 1959 for cancer. Cancer, what it do? Career season. Now, you don't have the same thing happening with, with the um, Mercury being retrograde. Mercury is not your ruler, right? The moon is. So, you know, step one, the moon for you, Cancer, like, you know, people always say you're moody and X, Y, and Z. Understand your, your moon is always changing. So it's not necessarily moody. Like, it takes a lot to keep up with your own ruler moving every two to three days. So with that being said... Oh, well, let's remember that there's eclipse uh, sure. vibes, too. Sure, so sure, it, it sure. Could... Naturally, going to shake up your, your sense of safety, right? Naturally, you're going to feel more nerves, okay? Uh, especially because both of these eclipses are squaring you. Aries and Libra are tension-based aspects to every Cancer out there. So a lot of Cancers, you might not feel like going outside right? Aries season is here and is transiting your 10th house. Great. Okay. The sun is ruling a second. Great. But that also means that the first Libra eclipse coming up in how many days? Three. Three days. That means that it's on your fourth and your eighth. So that's the trick. On the early end of this Libra eclipse, fourth house, eighth house is running through you. And it's not a happy place for you to be. But the sun is still running through your 10th and your second. So the key thing with you stepping in this is you take your privacy, but you're doing it to get more deeply involved in your own psychological motivations. That's the key word, psychological motivation. Getting really in tune with your addictions. Whether, addictions, you said? With your addictions. Whether it's being addicted to staying in the house, whether it's being addicted to going outside, whether it's being addicted to, you have to just look at that for yourself okay if you can't stop something that's the addiction we're talking about all right and a lot of this with the moon closing out okay which is going to be trained to your fourth house is going to be a part of your addiction to family and how much you serve them whether you recognize their gaslighting or not whether you recognize how they look to play on in your insecurities or not whether you recognize how they want to they they they, they unconsciously or consciously guilt trip you or not this is a key time frame to move forward with different and, and refresh social values. In the beginning of Aries season, it's going to be harder for you. Once this Libra eclipse energy kind of wear down and the Aries one brings up, now you're going to start basically maturing in your emotional reactions. And you're going to mature by listening to your body and cutting away from the parts of your body that has been riddled with fear. So I ask you to take care of your kidneys and come to our eclipse event on Sunday because that's one that can really help you out. What you got? It's crazy. I got the moon card for you, Cancer. So this card is about things coming to light uh, uh, during this season. Uh, everything that has been repressed, everything that we didn't want to look at, is just making its way. And it makes a lot of sense with also having the eclipses coming. Its energy just naturally moves us towards the parts that, um, even if we don't want to face them, but if it's better for us, life is just going to force us to go that way. So for you, Cancer, it's going to be so much easier if you just like flow, just choose to go with the flow. Yes, it's going to be a hard time, but then it's over and then you get to go to something that's bright, new, that's powerful, that's going to make your life so much better. Mm. So just go forward and make sure that you're not keeping any secrets that are pulling you back. Yeah, listen to your body, Cancer. You have secrets stored in your body right now. All right, Leo, spring equinox. This is what it's doing for you. Right? Leo, sun, moon, rising. All right, while the sun is in Aries, a fellow compadre, okay? <laughs> like, hello. The ruler of the sun is Leo, and who's there? Aries. So this is one of the most positive times for you. I feel the same thing with Gemini. Positive time for them as well. Even if they got to check in with their groups and associations, it still is a positive time if they make the right choices. So now... The key thing is, what are you cutting away? Beliefs of the father. Okay, this is the key. Like, you can't truly be yourself and step into your real identity if you're following your fo father's footsteps. Whether you understand that that's what's happening or not, it, it, you have an opportunity to emerge into a new identity. And that's the ruler of your first house right there, you see. All right, move, move into a new, I almost feel like I can stop right there for you. Like, this is the key. Now, when I say father, sometimes people get caught up and they think of their relationship with their biological birth father. And if you don't have a good relationship with that person, that 
you like sometimes people get like in their panties about it. That lets you know already that there's some triggers that you can go ahead and address. All right. If you already felt triggered by that. Now, step two, the reason why I say that as a prerequisite is because father can literally be a teacher. It could be a mentor from third grade. OK, that was like Mr. Mac. He was a father figure to me, literally Mr. Mac Sweeney. Now, I don't always consider him first thing first as my father, but he was a father figure. I had a coach, Coach Manjafico, literally. Like, you know, I'm not related to him with a name like Manjafico. Yet, he was a father figure to me. You know what I'm saying? Doug, a father figure. So these are all people that were not my biological father that I would consider as such. So the key is, what programs did they install into you that you can extract that brings you inner peace? And that's my key with the ninth house. The ninth house is a house of inner peace. So from each one of your father figures, each of them gave you something of inner peace. And they also probably gave you other parts of themselves that actually doesn't align and identify with you in a way that allows you to express your joy and deep satisfaction. So take what's, what's well, stay flexible with this ninth house energy, cut away what makes what you're inflexible about, especially if you see it's harmful, and understand that this is first house ruler for you. You can step through and create a new mask, which is more authentic to yourself. Yeah, literally, I have for you the two of ones in reverse. So it is about changing your mind, like refining the vision, gathering up the energy and not to scatter it away. It is about understanding what you have to do before you act. So this is a powerful system because obviously you have all of this energy and you have this mindset of like, well, this urge, I'm going to say, of just like acting and doing. But this is just a reminder of like stop a, a little bit. Think of what's the future vision, the long term, the actual price and Go for the long term, but don't stay for the short term satisfaction. Yeah. Facts, facts, facts. Good, good add on. So again, remember, we're giving away a free reading tomorrow. No, on Sunday at the Eclipse event. Other than that, tomorrow we're starting our eight weeks. So if you want to sit there and you want to see further with two mentors being myself and Eileen, go ahead and do that and check us out. This is the last day. We start tomorrow. <laughs> Thank y'all for joining that. It's one of my favorite promotions to date. Um, brings me a lot of joy. Again, you have the chance. Today's the last day. All right. First day. We do masculine feminine tomorrow. So now we're moving on to Virgo. So I've actually met some Virgos recently. And here's the thing. Like, they're actually going through death. So this is what the channel is talking to me for me. Now, the key with the sun and Aries, okay, a, a warrior spirit, someone who also is very sensitive. Okay, very naturally instinctual, very much goes for what they want when they feel it and feel that the, what they want is what they need and what they need is what they want. The eighth house is a more strategic house in being able to do deep emotional processing that Aries is not the best at. But while Aries is bringing light on there, Aries is willing to fight for what it loves and what it cares for. So while it's in the eighth house, Virgo, here's what we have for you, especially with the 12th house. It's about looking at this loss in your life where there is an actual physical death and like i said i've met some virgos and they're going through a physical death i have a sister who's a virgo and she's going through the, another death when it comes to debt and how she manages resources for mm. example and so whatever's going on there is a death and there is a moment to express a tremendous gratitude for your loss Something has been lost in your life, especially considering that Mars is going into Pisces. So Mars is this energy that rules Aries, and it's about loss and getting a deeper understanding and going on the battlefield with ending those karmic cycles and ultimately accepting the more spiritual side, the more esoteric nature 
of life as a whole, which for Virgos can sometimes work against their analytical process. Yet, this loss is showing you that there is a God. This loss is showing you that there are more reasons to be grateful for energies that you cannot see that are essentially initiated by the subtle body. So take this loss, take this death, and start to embrace that. If you can smell the beautiful flowers and hear the birds sing and tell you messages, you'll find more reasons to be grateful for the loss that has come. And there's a bright, bright light at the end of the tunnel that's waiting for you, Virgo. What you got? So for you, Virgo, I got the three of chalices, which like right on point again, it is about uh, being wary of your expectations because the emotions are just too strong right now. Yeah. And they're so high energy that it's easy to get carried away. So it's it, this gratitude thing is like, yeah, that, that's the thing to do. Because if we are stuck in this mindset of what I want, like what should I have? Mm. Well, it's getting stuck in these things of the dream that I don't have yet. Yeah. then it's so much harder to manifest from that position. Yeah. It's easier if you go through gratitude. So it's like, okay, today I have this to eat, I have this relationship, I have this bed, I have these clothes. Mm. And, and it can apply to whatever mm -hmm. it is in your life. So be wary of the expectations, do your gratitude, and you're going to be so much happier in this, uh, in this whole process. Big facts, Virgo. It's a time for a deep emotional processing. And Aries gives you the courage to look at these fears and actually process Okay, and some strategic mindset of gratitude. All right, Virgo, here we go. Libra, ooh, <laughs> right? Hey. Like, um, Libra, we can get right in it for you. Like, I'm knowing some, I'm thinking about some Libra Venuses right now. I'm thinking about some Libra Suns right now. Um, which relationships have you been in that has challenged your own personal integrity? And that's really where it, I feel like in a lot of ways it starts and ends. Like, how have they challenged your personal integrity? And how have you become so dependable on the resources, the assets, the relationship with another person that you lost yourself? You lost yourself in that other person. And it could be a scary time for you. Now, the sun here, you have an opportunity to actually cut away from a lot of the nonsense. Okay. This is the exact opposite season for you where you really are a fall based person you are the sunset okay you're literally six months from now where the moon is becoming stronger in your career life right but now the sun is becoming stronger in your relationships that require integrity okay your relationships that require a balancing act the fact that you have a, a, a lunar eclipse coming up for you on three days from now this is just like, boom. Yeah. It's something to choke up on. It's something to start speaking up and tell the truth. It's something to start looking at how you've been overly opinionated and start cutting away from being overly opinionated because that is a blocked or overreactive throat chakra. When you fall into just the societal expectations of how you should even structure and shape your opinion, which has nothing to do with who I am as a Libra and more to do with how the other person expects you to act and behave. Mm. So Aries is asking you to go ahead and cut that away. In the seventh and 11th house, it's a major, major time. The fact that Pisces is going through Mars, you're gonna lose a lot of friends and you're gonna realize they weren't friends. You're gonna lose a lot of connections. You're gonna realize that they had ulterior motives and intentions that actually did not serve you in any way, shape or form other than serving themselves in a selfish manner. So this is what I have for you, Libra, what you got? Mm. For you, I have the Queen of Wands. And this is all about, uh, it, it would be a nice time for you to get like a tutor or somebody that you look up to if you've been wanting to take like a course or, or something. This is the moment to do it. You have to have this higher knowledge within, within yourself and to understand how to use your powers. Then it is going to help you to actually fortify all of these relationships or, or well, fortify the ones that you get it that you get to keep and to also start building something new uh, because you're going to have the space, the energetic space is going to be open now for all of that. Mm. So even if you don't take like an actual course or something, think about somebody that you admire and then start reflecting on that. I, I recommend like journaling, like what are the things that make me admire this person? And first you're, you're going to realize that a lot of that is already within yourself. And the second part is that 
whatever parts you feel that are not as ready from yourself, that is what you can focus on in this uh, season to actually work on to your shadow work. And it's going to help you to make uh, a better commitment in the future. Facts. Libra, we got the Eclipse event on Sunday. Like I said, we're working on the kidneys. That's your main organ and it holds fear. All right. Otherwise, Saturday, tomorrow, we're meeting for the AE reality. If something longer term is for you, we have that sacred individuality. We're talking the masculine and feminine. So if, you're, if we're the mentors that you're looking for, it's available. All right. Otherwise, we're going to move on to, and what's up? Hey, I see you, Venus. Um, I was eighth in line. Bang. I just started a course with four classes about gene keys and HD and the acupuncture points of the gates. Ooh, I like that. I'm a big fan of acupuncture. I like that. Get to move your chi that gets trapped. Um, okay. So we got Scorpio rolling through the sixth house. I don't even know why I'm clapping for you, Scorpio. It just, I just, I just felt it immediately. Um, okay. So the sun shining light on your sixth house of your mental health and professionals that take care of different facets of your body that can result in anxiety and worry in the career space. Okay. So is you, are you shining light right now, Scorpio, on the parts of your career that bring you anxiety, that make your nervous system and your physical body feel unsafe? And in a sense, how can you mature in that process by cutting away certain routines and habits of the way you approach your work, do your work, and harvest the gains from your work that are just not in alignment, somehow, some way, non integrity. This is a lot of feminine energy. Scorpio is feminine, sixth house is feminine, tenth house is feminine. There's a lot of feminine energy, and feminine energy in its shadow is inauthentic. Mm. Okay? And so, Scorpio, that's something that already like shakes you to the core to hear. I'm inauthentic, I'm inauthentic, I'm inauthentic. How could I be inauthentic? I, I refuse to be inauthentic. And this is one of your best abilities as the evolution of Leo to go ahead and disintegrate. So Leo being the sun, for example, <laughs> Aries being the sun, boom, you got the, <clears throat> yeah. right? I know that they got the incense going. Um, the incense been talking today, right? And so Scorpio, ultimately what I'm getting is, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a time frame to actually cut away certain habits certain addictions and this is a key theme okay like i know like even for myself i'm a scorpio rising i'm like all right boom the 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 weed and marijuana is gone until it's gone and i know that's basically at least like the next five to six months right at this point alcohol in my life has been gone for more than a year and so this is just about cutting down the addictions that were response mechanisms when stress in the career space was activated. Aries has the courage and the bravery to help you follow that initial impulse. And with as a Scorpio, it's so strategic, so lasting, you have the ability to take that initial impulse further and beyond, especially with the 10th house, take it all the way to the top of the mountain. And so if you're willing to get rid of X addiction, change up X routine, and that could be something as simple as watching TV every night before bed, that could be a routine. But is it allowing you to wake up to pursue your career in a way? Or are you waking up feeling nervous and anxious and because of all the violence on the television? Aries actually to go ahead and take a moment to cut away from the things that are overbearing on your sensitivities, not allowing you to receive the message. Hmm. Yeah, uh, for you, I have the Eight of Cups, which is about um, holding on to things that usually go. So it is about destroying everything that doesn't serve us anymore. And it's like right on point with what, we, what you were saying, but it's like getting rid of all of these energies that are, are not letting us go forward, that are pulling us back. Uh, it, it is also about anything emotional. Uh, we were just doing like, like a cleanup, you know, spring cleaning, and it was very hard. I, like I felt it. I, I, I am Scorpio Moon, and I felt that I want to just keep everything and the reasons behind that is because i wanted to get attached to some feeling that was there before but understanding that this isn't really my reality anymore make it so much easier to say okay thank you but now i'm making space for something new and this is the whole thing about it like it is a, a spring cleaning within our souls 
Yeah. So just think about that. Like, what what would you like to welcome? And in order to welcome that, what has to be gone? What mm. has to be destroyed? Mm. Man, I gotta share this, and then we move to Sag. Like yesterday, I found myself on my hands and knees with hella like a uh, hot water, hella crystal and peppermint, <laughs> scrubbing the steps. And the steps are made out of some kind of alloy or metal, right? Scrubbing them, hands and knees. Eileen came home and she looked at me and she almost, <laughs> she didn't even want to talk, yeah. right? She didn't even want to act. She was like, you were just so focused. And I was like, scrubbing the steps. And when I say that, the 10th house, I'm a Scorpio rising, right? the 10th house is about the mountain goat. It's the steps that you take to climb the top. And all I felt was when I was cleaning the steps that I need to clean the steps that I walk. I need to clean up the ascension process. I need to clean up how I choose to ascend. So it's like the people you're working with in your career, are you working with them and you're climbing that, but it's costing you more? Is there an addiction to the public fame that is costing you more in your everyday working life? And I feel like there's a part of me that didn't register that in the moment, but it registered solar plexus is what I got, ambitions being power hungry or being ambitious in a healthy manner, okay? Being domineering, controlling, and highly critical in the career space or actually, you know, having fun, feeling light and joy and reaching that gem deep within your soul that actually is fulfilling, right? And, and full of integrity at the same time. So Scorpio, that's kind of like a little extra part two bonus. All right, we got bang, bang, bang. We got Sagittarius timestamp. Bow. Nope. Okay. Here we go, Sagittarius. Sagittarius, spring equinox. What is bringing for you? Another fire, Aries in the sun. Sagittarius, you're fire. All right. Sun, moon, rising, Sagittarius. You're in the fifth house and the ninth house. Okay. So, excuse ooh. me. And ooh -wee. I feel like you don't have a <laughs> tremendous amount of fixed beliefs until you do. <laughs> right? And so this, for me, is all about fixed beliefs. Um, the beauty as a Sagittarius mutable fire, you can change your beliefs. Now, the thing is, you believe what you believe so strongly that it could be highly difficult to change the belief. I feel like you got to interject for half a second. What you got right away? Give me the impulse. Oh, no, it, it's a happy thing. Like, yeah. I, like, I'm really happy for these Sagittarius because yeah. uh, we have read the Ten of Pentacles. So it's like really reaching a new um a new point like a, a turning point for you like finally feeling that everything is falling into place mm. like yeah the, the, it, because the ten of pentacles is not just about material wealth it is about like family it's about legacy it is about building something that is going to last for centuries like even after we're gone like people keep talking about like that that kind of stuff so I, I just saw the the card and I was like, oh yeah, I'm I'm so happy for you, Sash. Like yeah. you go you. It, yeah. It's a it's always nice to see that all of the efforts finally paid off. Yeah. All right, Sash. I want you to call up your mentor, your father, your guide, your guru, and say thank you, and tell them why you're thank you, and express that gratitude, express that how they brought you life, how they brought you back to a sense of vitality and pure optimism. Like I said, fire, fire, every sun, while you're a Sagittarius, fire, fire loves fire. Like it is what it is. It loves action. It loves to express its joy, its vibrancy. Take this time right now to indulge in the brilliance and the radiance that's all around you. Okay. Fifth house is a house of channeling energies, channeling angels, channeling God. Right, and ninth house can do a lot of the same thing. So see with that third eye vision beyond the material right now, and you'll get to the center of that ten of pentacles energy. You'll get to the center of seeing how much beauty is really there, even outside of the material success, but the legacy that you're creating and climbing. All right, Sash. Yeah, you go, Sash. Yeah, you go, Sash. <laughs> All right, check us, check us, check us with the thumbs up and the likes button. Tomorrow we meet. Day one, and I'm giving away the free reading and membership on Sunday.
<laughs> got me. Oh man, this you gonna give me? Yo? I was like, let me get a sip of that juice. This is she gonna give me? I don't want that backwash spit. It's my juice. <laughs> I don't even want it. It's, it's all seeds down there. It's guava in there, so you know the bottom is just seeds. It's just, you're going to sw- <laughs> I'll stick with my water. All right, thank you for hitting the thumbs up and the likes button. Yo, we are now pulling up on um, Cap. Capricorn season. Y'all see me. I feel like I, I, I really see a tremendous amount of optimism and gratitude on everybody. Capricorn, you're one of those other earth signs. <sighs> That could be a little heavier for you in some ways, all right? Um, you're coming up to some major closings, all right? Uh, especially in the 410, in, in your career, right? Because Libra is the moon and the eclipse, the lunar eclipse closing out your 10th house in your career. Mm. So I've heard a lot of Capricorns recently going through some, at least in their mind, I mean, that's the eighth house, right? At least in their subconscious, some struggles with their career because there's changes, all right? Whether whether you lost your job, whether you're changing your job, um, whether the methods of how you approach your everyday life and your practice, all right? This something is, 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 is cutting away that has not been true to you, that has not actually, uh, that's something that you haven't felt a sense of sensual brilliance with, especially at, in an, at an emotional level, right? This is a time frame where whatever's happening, whatever's cutting away, whatever, if you're dealing with anger, rage, frustration, any of these emotions, and you're not taking the time to process it, it's not gonna be a great time for you. But what you do have is an opportunity to look at what emotions you are more fearful for you and actually spend time on that in private. Okay, spend time on that and dedicate yourself to a strategy that allows you the time and the space to a process, emotionally speaking, whether again, kind of like cancer, whether it's guilt, whether it's shame, whether it's regret, take the time to process, why do I feel that way? And the beauty is it will actually bring you a renewal. It will bring you new life, a brand new step in the right direction for this is who I am today. This is not what they made me. And so I want to hear what she said before I continue. Yeah, well, we have the death card. So it is truly about closing it, it, it can be in anything uh I, i'm here in career but i also feel relationships i feel that it's stuff i feel that it's dreams like really all, all of these things that that are, are are no longer useful to us so it, it is a grief period because i mean let's face it it's not easy to just say goodbye to something that we've been holding on to yeah. for so long uh but like the the good part of the death card is like it's not just the dead, like it, it comes with renewal. It yeah, does yeah, come with yeah. new life afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. So it is just uh, try to take this in, in the best way possible, like looking, knowing that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So I had a friend that was always telling me like, you know, like you are allowed to feel depressed. You are allowed to just get in bed and stay there. Don't wash your hair and be eating chocolates for two days in a row, but just set your time. Like how much time am I going to be grieving? And after that time passed, start making steps and moving forward to the actual things that you want to do yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Because it, it is a necessary step. Yep. And it is part, I feel like in society, it's like sometimes seen badly if you just allow your feelings to come out. Mm. But it's, like, it's exactly it's the exact opposite. opposite. Yeah. Like in this grieving process, you're saying goodbye, you're letting go. Uh, so crying is a positive thing. Letting go is a positive thing. Grieving is a positive thing. Being depressed is a positive is a positive thing. Mm-hmm. As long as you know how long you're gonna do it, and yeah. after that you get out of the funk. Yeah. And if if it's um uh, if this feels right with you, if it resonates with you, get an accountable accountability partner, get a friend, and let them know what you're going through, and let them like have your support group around you to let you to actually come forward and get mm-hmm. up if it feels that it's too hard for yourself to do on your own. Thanks facts yeah she said it you know that's how you're going to make space for the next manifestations but again key is make space so you're you're full right now you're full of a lot of emotion that needs time to process and if you do it and you allow it happily you're in a good space all right we got a 50 5004 aquarius gang what up aqua baby you know i love you i've been open about this my whole life i love me some aqua 
okay? <laughs> I love that sunshine you bring to the world, that brilliance, okay? All right, Aquarius, all right? <laughs> um, your main sign is in two signs that uh, I don't think is the best for you. You have Saturn and Pisces, and then you have Uranus and Taurus. <laughs> 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 I can't say Uranus around her or without her being a little kid, like ever. Like it doesn't fail. You notice <laughs> oh. Exhibit A. She just can't let it go. She's like, mm -hmm, Uranus. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> Aquarius. <laughs> Can you see the Aqua in her? My sun design is Aquarius. Yeah, I got an Aqua oh, Moon and Aqua Venus. Yeah. So I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of my Aqua Venus and Aqua Moon. Um, the key with this is uh, your sign Saturn structuring your dreams, structuring, um, again, your grief and your loss. That's a part of what's happening there. Uranus and Taurus, okay, destabilizing your monies, destabilizing the parts of your, your worthy system that felt unworthy, that felt unlovable. These are some heavy things happening for you. But the sun right now, is gonna bring some light, okay? It's gonna bring some more positivity in a sense, right? Some more joy. A third house is a joyful house, right? Like it's a very young juvenile type house. It's a fun place to be, a fun place to transit. And so what I'm getting for you is expect a lot of changes in your transportation style. If you walk, drive a car. If you drive a car, take the train. If you take a train, take a flight. Right. Um, but anything in your local environment, what it'll help you do is do problem solving out of the box. So instead of being in your routine right now, of I go to the car, I drive to the car every day at 7 a.m. and I listen to this CD track, blah, blah, blah. Switch it up. Switch up the music. Switch up what you're listening to. Listen to how you want to feel. So if you want to feel vibrant right now, Listen to music that makes you feel like where maybe you don't listen every day, but it makes you go dun, 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 and they start voguing it out. Now, the sun ruling your seventh house, the key thing with this is what's happening is you are kind of like Libra in a sense where you're going through a tap in with your integrity and your relationships. And you're starting to realize, damn, the friends that I had actually were not very much in alignment with me, right? They knew who I was and they wanted to keep me at that identity base. And I'm not willing to please that narrative anymore. And Aquarius, this is a tough loss for you because you love your friendships, you love your connections just as much as you love your isolation and alone time. But you somehow like to prioritize these relationships more than you honor yourself. And that's part of the sun ruling your seventh house of projections where if you take those different routes, change your transportation, change your music, listen to different music than the people from your immediate environment back at home. So if you're from Mexico City, for example, listen to music from people who live in India and, you know, just some wedding style music from, from India and watch how it switches up your vibrancy. Watch how your projection field will actually shift and change. So you'll stay outside of that projection field of your immediate environment long enough that one, you embrace a whole new set of projections, but two, you'll actually understand who you are at a deeper level. All right, what you got? Well, first of all, I think that J Lo's comment is hilarious. What she got? Uh, uh, she just made a comment on another live uh, from Astro, uh, uh, human, human Design, Design Jinkies, all dancing, and you're looking around the room like, Where, where's the camera, where's the camera? <laughs> Yeah, but no, like this is right on point. I, I love how synchronicities work. I feel like this life today has been like so, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, we were talking about changing the transportation and then they hit me with the chariot in reverse. Mm. Like you can see, this is what I was talking about. Like the chariot is usually like an actual chariot and it's carried like uh, with wings and in, in the sky. And you can see how this is just a family in a car. Mm -hmm. So th that's why I love this day. And beside, beyond that, uh, the chariot is about winning, but it is in reverse. So it is gonna take a little bit of time. And I feel that it's just for these things to get into place, like the new relationships, letting go of the old relationships, changing it up, 
doing the dancing, changing the music. And as long as everything is uh, in congruency with the new identity, yeah. with the new yourself, yeah. with, with a, a, everything that is actually aligned in alignment with yourself, yeah. then the winnings are going to come. Like they are already underway. They're yeah. like so close that you can almost yeah. taste it. Yeah. yeah. But it's just waiting like that little adjustment to Ooh. be like, Ooh. raining on you. Ooh. Ooh. Aquarius, <laughs> cut away some followers. That's what I got. If you want to win, Aquarius, drop some followers. When you're going through and you're hitting the unfollow and follow, if you pause and you go, oh, I don't want to unfollow this person because of what they're going to think about me, Oof. that's the one you got to let go. That made me want to go to my Ooh. IG and unfollow somebody like right you now. You got to unfollow people right now, Aquarius, <laughs> and know that they're going to be mad at you and they're going to throw some clout, some shame, okay? And realize that that's exactly why you'll win. But the chariot will move forward. That's why you're going to win. Yeah. Yeah. If that hurt you in the heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I felt it in my Because soul. Saturn is in Pisces, remember? So it's about letting go of those connections. Flush them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Flush them. <laughs> Flush them. Flush them down the toilet, Aqua. I really love those emoji games. Yeah, the, yeah they're kind of dope, right? Like, yeah, they're they're cool, kind of dope. Cool. Flush them down the toilet. I swear to God, you do that, you will win. It's not gonna feel like a win up front because they're gonna shame you. I'm telling you right away, they're gonna try to make you feel bad. And I guess if you're a bad person, but you're not. And you know that because you are the objective mastermind. Yes. All right, here we go. Last one, Pisces. Hit the thumbs up and the likes button, gang. All right, I appreciate y'all. Remember, we got the event starting tomorrow, day one of the Sacred Innovators. Masculine Feminine is the first lesson to help you understand how to merge your masculine feminine and your individual chart to actually work it for business and make some moolah. All right. And then we got Sunday. I'm giving away one free reading. All right. As well as a membership to first place and second place. First place gets the free reading. Second place gets only the membership. First place gets the membership and the free reading. Any reading on my website. All right. Here we go. I'm trying to find. Oh, it's gone. <gasps> it's too far. We got we got comments out here. OK. <laughs> um, Don't worry. I have it right here. I have it right second here house, too. sixth house. Thank you. Hit me with that copy paste. There you go. There you go. I appreciate it. Nothing shall stop us. Teamwork made the dream work. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Dynamic duo in the house. Right. <laughs> Let us know if you're on YouTube. Vote if you would like to see more um, collaborations between Eileen and myself. And, and let we know that uh, we let you know we appreciate it. Okay, timestamp. Pisces. Um, what's up, Miko? Good to see you. All right, here we go. Pisces, second house, sixth house. Here we go. What we got for you? I'm blank. <laughs> Maybe because Mercury debilitates your sign. So Mercury going retrograde, you, you get debilitated. I'm blank. <laughs> I got nothing. Nothing <laughs> came up right All away. Right. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, we, we have the, the five of wands. So definitely conflicts are going to come. Like, it, 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 is, it is just natural. Like, the sun's just getting there. Uh, pro, it's, I feel that it's probably going to hit some, some of the uh, material things uh, for yourself. It, it might seem like a setback, but in reality, we have the eclipse coming too. So these are just things that aren't going to serve anymore. So yes, there's going to be conflicts. And again, I feel like there's this, um, uh, this uh, I forgot, like uh, idea, the statement of letting go of relationships, letting go of actual things. Specifically for Pisces, I feel that I I'm a Pisces. So I feel that for me, it's time to like get Tibetan monk mindset and just leave the stuff behind and focus on the spirituality. Like that's going to be the key, the key thing for, for a Pisces in this season. And yes, there are going to be arguments. Yes, there are going to be conflicts. But it is time to face it. I feel that as Pisces, sometimes the, the harmony, it's more important. And in order to keep peace, we forget about ourselves and we acquiesce and we say yes to anything Ooh. just to see the other person happy. Because I, honestly, like I'm a Pisces and I love seeing other people happy, mm. even if I'm the one I lost. Okay, I'll come back. You came back. back. Yeah, I'm back. Yes. Yeah. So with the sun and Aries, it's about cutting away from the parts of your self-worth that identifies with somebody else's appreciation. And that's one of the key. Like second house could be a house of affection. And it loves affection. But do you love affection so much that you're going to betray yourself? And Aries is like, I'm not down for that. Aries is here to go to bat for you, Pisces. Aries 
is literally your your little big brother. Okay, yeah. literally that's Aries to you, Pisces, and Aries is like, you know what? I need you to lose some of your clothes. So I want you to donate your clothes, Pisces. I want you to donate some photos or burn them. Okay. I want you to look at some old notes and burn them. Things that you have, you own, that you own for a long time, that energetically is tied to an old form of how you value yourself, needs to get cut away and burned. I'm getting literally Homa in Vedic astrology, for example, it's called Homa rituals. Last night, I burned a lot of stuff. I had my fire pit out and I burned a lot of stuff. I'm the type of guy, like I pour gasoline yeah. on, on things in the fire pit and I'm like, burn, baby, burn. I love you. just like, hmm, it's time to burn something. I haven't burned something in a long time. <laughs> yo, yo, I told her that like three weeks ago, I was like, I want to burn something. She's like, okay. And I was like, can I burn this? She was like, I was like, what do you think about burn this? She was like, I don't know. And then three weeks later, I'm like, ah, so loud, motherfucker. Fire. And just fire everywhere, okay? Like, um, and, 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 and so Pisces, what I'm getting literally, when you're burning it, the key thing is about the intention. So burn away the parts where you value yourself based off of how much affection they gave you in response to you taking their suffering. And that's the key, okay? Because sixth house, ruling your sixth house right there, all right? Um, the key now is the mental anxiety is not worth it. Mm. Your physical body never feeling safe to truly be yourself, it's not worth it, okay? Where you have to dissociate and actually start taking more drugs and falling into different forms of addiction is just to shift your identity in a way that is going to be more pleasurable for the next person outside of you, but much more harmful for you or your own physical body. You can dissociate all you want, but at the end of the day, you're still a human being. Oh, what was it that you said yesterday that was like genius? Okay, we got the last quote for you. Yeah, yeah. I actually got a, uh, this is the last one, because I actually got a, here we go. Introverts understand themselves so well that they're unwilling to take part on superficial and draining interactions. Copy that and put that in the chat, please. Extroverts, <laughs> introverts. Oh, sorry. Introverts understand themselves so well that they're unwilling to take part in superficial and draining interactions. In Pisces, you're a natural introvert. Let's be honest. And this is why the damage is so great for you because nobody does the type of emotional processing that a Pisces does. Nobody. Not even Scorpio. Not even Cancer. Pisces does it to completion. And this is the difference. Meaning you can actually end karma and essentially transcend it from your subconscious mind. That 98% that we're programmed to follow on autopilot. Hey, you see the demons. The demons is coming out. Not today. Get the spray. You ain't going to win over here. I'll let y'all know. It's airy season. It's the wrong season to step up. All right? You better come back another season. This is my season. All right, here we go. Um... So that's what I really have for you, Pisces. Burn some physical things. So in Colombia, there's a ritual around this time of the year in Medellin, Colombia, where they make like a human, but it's filled with clothes. So they make yeah. a human being that looks like a human, but it's shaped and made out of all clothes. So they take all their clothes and they, they burn it because of the emotional attachment, the energies, the, the trauma and the drama. This is a part of the stuff that happened where it's like, they might have murdered somebody in this pair of clothing. Or you kind of get the point. That's a lot of energy to hold on to, right? And so when up in the Comuna Thrace, they do it in Comuna Thrace because this is where, again, Pablo Escobar had his drug reign, drugs, Pisces. And they do it during this exact time frame. And so they do it as a ritual to burn away the energies of the past, of the attachment. So burn something i see somebody burn i burn the letter i burn the letter too i burn names i burn adjectives all right <laughs> i burn all kinds of stuff i love to burn the key is the intention when you're burning it when i'm burning it, i'm thinking to myself i purify this i cleansed it right um i've learned my lesson here i've, I've learned from this experience i'm ready to to move forward i'm ready to take my take my wins take my losses and become a better person so that's what we have for you. 
I actually have a meeting with one of the sacred innovators right now. Ooh. So did you pull a card from him already? Yeah, you did, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I have a, 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 a interview with him right now. It's not too late for you. That said, free readings being given away on Sunday and one membership. First and second place, you'll win different prizes. But tomorrow is day one. I'll see you here. <laughs> Jaylo, we got a channel message for you. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I, I was just saying that I, I feel that you've cleaned up your energy a lot, like at, at least like six months uh, for the last six months. Like you, you're starting to shine. Like, like I can feel it. Like I feel your energy way more pure than in any other life. So thank you for being here. Thank you for helping us with your pure energy and like glancing the chat and just even interactions and getting the emoji game. You love it. Nah, I really do. We do appreciate it, J Lo. That's love. All right. We'll see you soon. That's for you. And that came from a Pisces, so you know. All right. Ciao, ciao. Oh. <laughs> All right. Check us down in the chat. We'll see you soon. Thank you for hitting the thumbs up and the like button.